What's up, man? How's it going? Pretty good. What about you? Doing good. How have you been? I've actually done. I've been doing pretty good. Yeah. What's been new? Dude, I've been going to church now. Really? What yeah. church? Uh, there's some. I don't know what it's called. It's some church near my house. Me and my mom go. Okay. I never joined her to go. Now I do. That's good. Yeah. Uh, you seem different. I, I I feel a lot healthier. In a good way, you seem different. Yeah. Well, oh, thank you. I quit smoking too. You quit? I was gonna ask you that. How long ago did you do that? Huh? How long ago did you do that? I stopped. I stopped smoking a week after we met at the park. Pray, good job. So Praise I, the I, Lord. I haven't, I haven't really counted the days, but yeah. That's good. That's been a couple months though. Yeah. Good job. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's Amen. exciting. Yeah. What else is new? I've just been feeling happier, man. More relaxed, less stress. You know what I mean? That's great. That's great. Have you been reading John? No, I have, actually have not. That's the only thing I haven't really put my foot down is like actually reading like the the Bible. But I still pray. I go to church. I do everything. It's just the Bible. That's what I need to put my foot on. You know what I mean? Just like I got school and everything going on. Um, and I know I'm kind of making an excuse right now. I'm not going to lie because, you know, I have all that time before <laughs> going to bed. But I'm going to start doing that too. Challenge for you. Just read a chapter a day. That's a good, that's a good challenge. I can't, I could do that. Do you know how long it takes in the New Testament? Uh -huh. Do you know how long it takes to read a chapter a day? 20 minutes. Five. Five? It's actually, it's an average, they say an average is four minutes, but we'll give you five. Five. Oh, Wait, five we, minutes. We first met you at the U of A, right? Yes. Yes. And then the park. Like, I'm like, where did we see him? I know. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I know. I'm, We're I'm everywhere. Up. U of A, I was like, okay, okay, maybe I don't, maybe, you know what I mean? Park, I'm like, okay, this can't be a coincidence. Now look at you guys here, you know yes. what I mean? Can't be a coincidence. God's really like, he is. Because, because I mean, I was I was kind of slacking about reading the Bible. This guy gave me a challenge chapter a day, so that's what I'm going to start doing. Praise the Lord. The other time was, uh, I, dropped, I dropped all my bad music too. Oh, you know good. I mean, yeah. Um, really? Yeah, I know, and smoking too. So the smoking, that's, how long did you smoke for him? I've been smoking since I was like 12. Oh, wow. And how old are you now? You're 17? Yeah. Good job. Five years, yeah. I smoked from 14 to 22. So that's hey. that's not a it's not an easy addiction to no, kick. So good job addiction. trusting yeah. the Lord and, and going through that. That's yeah. really awesome. That's praise God. Praise God. Hey, I hope that's, you guys have a good night. You too. Hey, you yeah. should check out um, our church. Oh, you, know, yeah. you, were, you met us at the park? Yeah. yeah. We meet there at 2.30. Oh, at the park? Yeah. yeah. What, uh, what day? 2.30 tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Sunday. Okay, cool. Yeah. So 2.30 tomorrow. You should come check us out. Deal. All right. Good, good to see you. Good, good to see you too, man. Good job. Good to see you again. Wow. Good night. Take care. That's so funny. <laughs> I was like, I've seen him before. Where did I? And then I'm like, oh, yeah. The U of A that one day. He came to give us a hard time. He did. He and did until he, he realized that he we couldn't. weren't. He's like, you guys are making a lot of sense. Oh, because he was really into, um, I was refuting Fred, wasn't I? Was you, it Fred? You, we, it was before Fred walked up. We were talking I about think. Catholicism and why it wasn't good. And then Fred came up and then he was telling Fred, like, no, they're making a lot of sense. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. What's up, man? How are you doing, bro? Hey! Nah, I was at the U of A, and then we saw you at the park. Yeah. And then we saw you at the swap meet last time, See? and here you are again. What's up? How are you doing? Pretty good. What about you? Oh, yeah. What, what happened to you after you come to the gospel, John? I'm going to be honest, bro. I mean, nothing. Never like, huh? Never no, dude. Why not? Dude, because, like, I mean, my, my band, like, blew up. And that's what I've been focusing in on, like, this past, like, my half, my half a year. Your band's the high, your idol now? I wouldn't say my idol, bro, but, like... Did you get one of these? What do you think it takes to get into heaven? Yeah. I mean, my whole family is, like, Christian and stuff. So I have a good, like, grounding within it. Like, I'm not, like, avidly going to No, I'm not thinking about them. Like, I understand, you know, like, you devote yourself and you really just, like, kind of let God take your life and kind of, like, just, like, live for Him every day type of stuff. Have you ever had an encounter with Jesus where you heard Him speak to you? I wouldn't say, like, I've had anything like that because, again, like, yeah, just, like, I, like my family is that. And, like, yeah. What are you? What do you believe? 
right now, I don't know. I've kind of just like kind of a drifter. Mm-hmm. I would say just yeah. most of the life, just like you know, definitely not doing nothing crazy. You know, like thinking about like other yeah, that's, stuff. That's, you yeah, know, like I still have more like around you, like like God and Jesus and all that. Uh huh. Definitely like not like super devout or anything like that. What's your name? Adrian. Adrian, I'm yeah. Summer. It's good to meet you. So I've noticed a pattern. So I was born and raised in church. I've noticed a pattern. So people's, so the, the parents will be Christian, and the kids will grow up in it. And then when they get of age to where they choose what they want to do, they drift. You know why? They've never had an encounter with Jesus. Because it's like, a lot of times our parents don't I I like teach us what we need to know, or or churches sadly don't teach us what we need to know either. If you look at the American church, and if you read the Bible, you see they're two very different things. We're, I don't Have you ever read Revelation or heard about the, the churches that Jesus rebuked? Uh, a little bit, I think it was like they were using it for self benefit. Yeah, there was one church in Laodicea that they relied on their wealth, they were comfortable. And Jesus said that you are neither hot or cold because you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. So it's like our, our lukewarmness makes him sick. He's like, I'd rather that you be hot or cold. Either all for me or all against me. This this whole apathy thing is making me sick, is essentially what he said. So you look at the American church, we're so comfortable. We have, we're not in extreme poverty. I mean, look at homeless people, they even have cell phones. Like, we all have enough food to eat for the most part. We got a roof over our heads. We got some money to spend. So we're, we're comfortable. We're distracted by life. We're not thinking about God or the things of God. We're not thinking about the next life to come. And so it's, it's really a scary thing when you, you think about it. Because like if this God stuff is all real, if Jesus really is who he says he is, then this is really serious. Did you know that Jesus said that he's the only way to heaven? Yeah. Do you know? I remember like reading about stuff like that in the Bible. Yeah. Do you know that he said that? Um, what was it? He said that many people on the last day will come to him and say, "Lord, Lord, I did many things in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I prophesied in your name." And he'll say, "Depart from me. Why? I never knew you. Workers of lawlessness, you lawbreakers. You say you know me." You go to church, do all the Christian things, you believe in me, but you don't know me. That's a scary thing. And I was raised in church, and, and that verse always scared me when I read through the Bible. And I'm like, how do I know for sure that I'm saved? And, and Jesus said the way to be saved is to be born again. Do you know what that means? Like, uh, kind of like... Well, forgetting like all the other stuff and just like you know what like kind of like your own journey with you. instead of just relying on like your family who's Christian so I'm automatically good like, or more being like I want to get to know you I want to read like let's, let's rekindle this let's really have a relationship like going through all of it reading the word you know not being afraid to go out and talk about it and stuff like that and like and then like I wish I could have a young age. Like, I was just like, like, getting, to be a good Christian like, boy. Kind of stuff. And I yeah. So that's all part of it, but the core thing that most people don't, most people miss. I missed it. I didn't wasn't born again until I was in my twenties. Like I went to church my whole life. I didn't understand what it meant to be born again. So that the core of it is, you realize you've sinned against God, and there's no way that you can make it right, and you just throw yourself at Jesus' feet and say, God, have mercy on me. Change me. And, and so he goes in, he sends his Holy Spirit into your heart, and he changes who you are on the inside, the, the core of your being, who you are, and you're never the same. He, he actually, it's, it's, it's the power of God coming into you 
and he changes your desires. So whereas people are addicted to drugs, people are addicted to alcohol, people are addicted to porn, they're in living a lifestyle that God is not okay with. When they're born again, the Holy Spirit changes their desires. The Holy, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, He makes you holy. So the things that you used to love, the, the alcoholic will put down the bottle. The drug addict will put down the needle. The, the person who's addicted to porn, they're, they're going to hate what they used to do. It may not happen all at once. Some people it happens overnight. Some people it's a, a struggle. Like I was an idolater before I was born again. I was addicted to video games, filled with all the things that God hates, sorcery, witchcraft, murder, all that. I couldn't change my desire, but overnight it was like, boom, I hate this. <laughs> I'm gonna delete my Steam account. I'm deleting everything. Like I cannot, I'm gonna throw up if you put this game in front of me again. So it's it's the power of God reaching into you and changing you. If this is all true, do you want it? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. How badly? So then I, mean, I like, myself for the law of God. Right like now, right now, but with my flesh, like right, right now, I can look at you in the face and so say, like, I want it so bad. I want it more than I want water. Is what I want here. He lived the life. It's like, you like I don't like have that said. genuine yeah. connection. It's worth nothing. My words are worth nothing. I feel like I need to get in a position where it's like. Yeah. I'm on that level yeah. to where yeah. I mean what I say like instead of just saying what I want to mean. Like you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. To so you're like, yeah. you're saying, I know I should want this more than water, but I'm not at that place right now. Yeah. Like I, I like to do stuff like I need to get there. I need to be on that level to be able to like. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm thinking, say, dude, I feel so you know guilty right yeah. now. I can't, I was, it doesn't feel honest. right in my gut, in my conscience, in my heart. Okay, now I'm really just be gonna like, go down this path. Yeah, I'm and then, yeah, and it's and honest. I, I appreciate it. God, God wants honesty. He doesn't want us to play games with him. But the good news is, is that God will meet you right where you're at. If you say, like, I know I should be here, but I'm here right now. You can take that to God and say, God, I know that I should want this more than water. I'm not there. My soul is apathetic. My soul wants other things. Help me to get to the place where I want you more than water. So you just you just be honest with God, like you're being honest with me. And, and pour out your heart to him and say, I know I need to be born again. I'm not there yet. Amen. So you you just you just come to God where you are and um, just keep praying to Him. Ask Him to reveal Himself to you, and and He'll He'll answer you. And it's also you're welcome. It also doesn't have to just be a blind faith. Like I wanted to know, can I believe the Bible? Is it trustworthy? So I'm a little bit of an archaeology nerd, and so I did the homework. I looked up like well, can we trust it yeah 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 so i actually wrote this so this is about the resurrection of jesus so if jesus didn't rise from the dead then we don't have to believe anything about christianity because it's like he if he didn't rise from the dead then how did he back up his claim that he's god but if he did rise from the dead that means he is god so this talks about some of the evidence that we know that Jesus rose from the dead. This this got some QR codes that talk about how we know that the Bible has been preserved accurately. And there's a video here also that talks about the resurrection. And you can have that. Well, I was, was going to ask you, like, hey, can I take it? Yeah, you can take it. It's not bad if I fold it, right? No. Just because I don't got no, like, no, it's, it's fine. It's still readable. There's also this really cool uh, YouTube channel you should check out. It's called um, Expedition Bible. Okay. So this... Biblical archaeologist goes to all these places, like they found Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, dang. You, they found it. So you can go there. You can see the walls of the city, the ruins of the city. You can see the out, like the the temple foundations were for the ziggurat that was there. And when you walk through there, it's just covered in white ash. You're just trudging through ash. And where the water near the city receded, there's these little yellow sulfur balls. 
that are different from sulfur found anywhere else in the world. It's different from volcanic sulfur. Is this the same sulfur that God rained down from heaven on the city in judgment? So that's one biblical site. You know, Joshua and Jericho? But they marched around the city seven times. One well, for seven days, they marched around it one time every day, and then on the, the seventh day, they marched around it seven times. They blew the trumpets and yelled, and all the walls fell. So they found Jericho. So they so there's no skeletal remains, but they found the city. So, yeah, but they they killed everyone in the city except Rahab and her family. So what's unique about this city? So you think about an ancient army if you conquer a city and you've got a whole like massive amount of nomadic people wandering around with you in the wilderness logically you're going to want to take the livestock for yourself you're going to want to take all the grain all the food anything food wise you find you want to take it for yourself but god commanded joshua and his army to burn everything in the city because that city was so perverted that city was so um evil he's like i don't want you to take anything from that city burn everything burn the grain burn everything yeah. so when they dug in they found the site for jericho they dug in and they found um the red bricks yeah, absolutely. so there were no siege works built them. around the city yeah. you normally that you want to siege was, a city like you build siege works really around it takes months no siege works the walls literally fell upon themselves like the like biblical I'm, account I'm, said just piles and piles of red bricks I'm not, I'm not and then they really found pottery you know in the burned but houses I, I really, I just, with I, burned I grain really inside the pottery, just like the biblical account. There's a whole lot of things in there. So another thing that's really neat, um, I'm going to read to you a passage from the Bible, and I'll see if you can guess who it's talking about. You'll, you'll probably get it because it's pretty easy. Most people get it. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Who do you think that's talking about? Yes. So fun fact. That's from the Old Testament. The book of Isaiah. So we know when it was written because of the, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So it was written 700 years before Jesus was born. So it's talking about crucifixion before it was invented. King David also talks about it in Psalm 22. It says, they've pierced my hands and my feet. That was before crucifixion was invented. Yeah. So the Medes and the Persians invented crucifixion, the Romans perfected it, if you can call it that. So, yeah, they, they made it more excruciating. That's where we get the word excruciating from, crucified. They, they made it to where a perfect spot where they would put it, you'd be in the most pain but survive the longest. Yeah, it goes through, the. there's a bundle of nerves here where the nails would go. They, avoided it, right? they they hit the bundle of nerves, so you feel it's the most painful. Yes. And um, I could I could feel like back it's, to back then, that's like a that's like, like a common misconception, right? Because like, don't go to, don't you know this, people say like through, the, like, hands through the hands, through the hands. Yeah, your weight would rip through. Yeah, but it feels right here. I didn't understand, yeah. but now I, I, I watched I a, like a YouTube video talking like about like what Jesus felt. I was like curious as to like okay, like. I mean, what I, actually I did it happen in that situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, it was crazy. It was like, apparently, like, with where the yeah. placement was, every time, like, he had to take a breath, it would, like, it yeah. Would if you wanted to exhale, you yeah. had to stand on nails on your feet, pull up on your hands to exhale, and then you go fall back down. And so it's miraculous the way Jesus died. So when you're suffocating, you're not going to be able to shout. Yeah. But he shouted when he died. He said, it is finished. And the centurion standing nearby, who's probably seen thousands of crucifixions, he says, surely this man was the son of God. Because he, he said the way this man died was different than all the other ones. It was like, 
they also send the video like everybody else I, like I pray that God would, they would God once they would die they would like it would take longer and then mm -hmm. they would have to like break their legs and stuff but for him yeah it was like once he, he was already that, dead he just finished and then they like you know stabbed mm -hmm. him and stuff just yeah. to yeah just to see and, the fact that it was blood and water that means that he had been dead already for a little bit so the, the yeah. blood the water had separated from the blood yeah 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 they break the legs so that they couldn't stand up and breathe anymore so they, they did that because it was sad because usually it would take about three days for them to die but look at this this is even trippier so this talks about his manner of death so they made his grave with the wicked so jesus was crucified between two thieves and with a rich man in his death, he was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. He was a wealthy man. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. So Pontius Pilate, who was the, the ruler of Judea at the time, the, the religious leaders, the, the Pharisees, trying to bring accusations against him. They bring him to Pilate. They say, this man is, is inciting people against Rome. He says he's a king. He's, he's, he's going against Caesar. And so Pilate questions him and he finds nothing wrong. He's like, there's nothing wrong with this man. The more he asked, the more afraid he got. It says Pilate was afraid. He's like, where do you come from? Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world, and you have no authority over me unless it had been given to you from heaven. Yeah. It says, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. So all of this talks about him. It also is prophesied that he would be born in Bethlehem, that there would be a great cry out of Ramah, which was when King Herod killed all the babies. It's prophesied that he would be called out of Egypt so when Jesus was a baby his family had to flee to Egypt because an angel warned them that, that Herod was going to kill all the babies and so there's historical proof that he went to Egypt and he then he was called back out of Egypt and that he would live in the area of Galilee so all of this was prophesied about him it was prophesied that he would open the eyes of the blind that he would open the, the ears of the deaf, that he would heal lepers, everything that he would do, that it was it was prophesied. So Isaiah is a pretty trippy book. I think it's one of my I think it's my favorite of the prophets because it not only talks about prophecy of Jesus, it talks about the rise and fall of kingdoms, it talks about the the Jewish exile to Babylon, how it would be exactly seventy years and it named the king that would send them back to Israel by name. So literally, King Cyrus is reading the scroll of Isaiah, and he's saying, that's me. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So prophecy is one of the things that proves the Bible to be true. That's just a little bit of the prophecies in this book. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I never really, like, sat down and just, like, took it in. Yeah, it's a lot. Like, I, I love this stuff. It's, it's amazing, like, that yeah. God... God preserved it and he gave us the evidence. And you know, the funny thing is, is the oldest manuscript we have of the New Testament, it's called P52. It, it's, it's the scene where Jesus is standing before Pilate. It dates probably about to 100 AD. So that proves that it was written very, very early, which means it doesn't have a lot of time to be corrupted. So it, it has the, the part where Pilate asks Jesus, what is truth? and truth is literally standing right in front of it so it's like people i'm like this is like a little easter egg people say like what's truth it's like the, the oldest manuscript we find in the new testament is, is Pilate saying to jesus what is truth and that's crazy that really makes you like uh, makes you think yeah yeah jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me it's not about us being a good person. It's not about us getting our life together. It's us admitting we can't do it. And just begging God for mercy. Yeah. 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 So you should pray and, and ask Jesus to reveal himself to you. And keep praying and, until you get an answer. Because 
I don't know if you're following the news lately, but things are looking pretty biblical over there in the Middle East. Yeah. All nations will go against uh, all nations will go against Israel, and then that freaked me out when I saw that. I was like, yeah, and you know, you know, they've wanted to build a third temple for a long time now. They're waiting to have a red heifer to sacrifice to dedicate the temple, and they're waiting for the Temple Mount. Right now, that's a it's a, a Muslim holy site, and so they can't build on the Temple Mount until that Muslim holy site is removed. They have all the plans for the temple. You can look online and take a, a, a digital tour of the temple. They have all the plans ready. They're just waiting for access to the Temple Mount. And so what's happening in the Middle East is very interesting. So all nations are going to come against Israel. Um, and then there's going to be a big war. And then there's going to be a man that comes up and suddenly makes peace. That's the Antichrist. And so, yeah, I don't know if this war is going to be it, but it's definitely paving the way for this guy. If you if you follow the, the World Economic Forum, the WEF, if you follow the United Nations, you look at, like, United Nations has what they call the Sustainable Development Plan. Yeah. It all sounds really good on paper, but it's devoid of God. They want to eradicate poverty. They want to make universal health care for everybody in the world. They have like, I think it's 22 different things, and they want to implement it by the year 2030. That's soon. That's really soon. That's very soon. So, I mean, I don't know if they're going to be able to implement it by then, but it's, that's their plan. So it's like things are looking pretty biblical. You look at it. And so that means that... God is about to judge this world. God is about to judge the evil in this world. And so you want to make sure that you're right with God because when he pours out judgment on this earth, it's gonna, the Bible says it's going to be a, a time of great tribulations just such as the world has never seen. So what we're seeing right now is called the birth pangs. We see wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, diseases, and COVID. Look at that. You look at the increase of earthquakes. I mean, half the world's been on fire. You look at Australia, you look at California, you look at Hawaii, everything's on fire. Really? So it's like, God's like, y'all need to wake up. Y'all need to repent of your sins and, and come to me. So you want to make sure you're right with God before all hell breaks loose and God sends judgment on this earth. Don't put it off. No, no Don't put it off. Do you have a Bible at home? I do. Read the book of John. Read the book of John, and then read the book of Romans, okay. and ask Jesus to reveal Himself to you. This is so this is God's message to you tonight. This is this was meant. This was meant to be. This was meant to be. Hope you have a great night. You too. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. It's good seeing you.